What's up guys? Hey, this is Christian Brindle with Six Figure Medicare Agent. Hope this video finds you doing well. And I'm a cue ball once again um, from the neck up with the exception of eyebrows. I've got all my hair off. Um, just wanted to do it. So this is the first video I'm doing since we made that change. Um, hope you guys like it. And if you don't, you're just going to have to stare at my head for the remainder of this video. Guys, I wanted to have a very, very serious conversation with you about something that I've been thinking a lot about. And I could be completely off in this, and I want to kind of tell two sides of the argument here. And that is, in my personal opinion, I think that there's a very strong possibility that Medicare might not be here 15 to 20 years from now. And I'll explain what I mean by this. Now, in before, before um, you say anything, before you make any preconceived notions, I'm not trying to make this video to scare people. I'm not trying to make this video um, to encourage people not to get into the Medicare business. I think it's probably one of the best businesses in the insurance industry. Um, I've basically built my entire adult life around the Medicare business, and it's fantastic, and I'm, I'd never discourage anybody from getting into the Medicare business. But that being said, I think we need to talk about the realistics of some possibilities that I, that could potentially happen down the road. Um, and this video is not meant to scare you, but it's meant to inspire you, and I hope you get kind of get that message by the end of the video. So let's talk about um, some numbers here. So first things first, let's talk about what we know about Medicare. Medicare was first put into in place in the mid-1960s by the President Lyndon B. Johnson. It was originally intended to cover, um, obviously, senior citizens once they turn 65 and older. Um, and at that point in the 1960s, there was a fraction of the senior citizens in the country that there are today. Um, when it was passed by Congress, when it was passed by Lyndon B. Johnson and put into effect, they were basically looking at the outlook for the next 10 years, 20 years. Um, they were not, not necessarily taking into consideration how populated that the, the United States would become 60 years out, because we're probably about 55, 56 years since Medicare has passed up until this point. Now, the reason why I'm telling you all this is because Think about it like this from their perspective. It's really impossible for them to look at it nearly 60 years out and kind of what it would look like and if it would be sustainable. Um, that would be like me taking 2020 and looking out to 2080 and trying to term, determine and predict how something's going to be or how something's going to work. I have no way of knowing and I probably have no, not even a glimpse of um, reality of looking into the realistics of this. Medicare was originally designed, like I said, to cover a fraction of the people. Um, they weren't really thinking about 60, 55, 60 years out in 2020. Obviously, our population has, has expanded dramatically ever since this has taken place. Um, the government has printed more and more money, um, which has caused inflation to rise. And also, our country is in more debt, I think, than we've ever been before, Medicare being part of that. Um, they had the intention of covering people also for a shorter amount of time. Let me explain. The mortality age in the 1960s and 1970s was much lower than it is today. With advancements in medicine, um, technology, people are living longer than ever before. So not only is there more people getting on to Medicare than there ever was, and there's more people that the government has to, to, to keep track of and remain responsible for, um, but... People are on it much longer than they ever were before, right? Because the government doesn't have to take care of somebody on Medicare once they pass away. So in terms of, you know, the amount of people, it far exceeds what they ever expected it to become. The mortality age far exceeds what they ever expected it to be. And I just wanted to go over some, some numbers here with you. So currently, the, the, according to the Kaiser Foundation, the most accurate and up-to-date number we were able to find is 59.9 million people in the United States at the time of making this video are currently on Medicare. That number is estimated to go to 79 million in 2030. So from a business perspective, from a from an agent perspective, you look great. You look at it fantastic. That's a great opportunity for me, and it is. Um, 
set, you know, borderline 80 million people nationwide on Medicare. That's a fantastic thing. And it is good. It's good opportunity for all of us because there's so many of them and so few of us as agents in comparison. But that being said, I do believe that anytime you're looking at a ship with a hole in the bottom and it's leaking water, I think you're going to be in a position where unless they find a way to patch up that hole, and what I mean by patching up the hole is the government hemorrhaging money, and I'll get into some numbers and statistics here in a second here, um, trillions of dollars being printed for stimulus packages doesn't help that. But if unless they find a way to patch up that hole in the bottom of the ship, it's going to continue to to leak water until the whole ship goes down. So this is a problem I feel that needs to be addressed, and if it's not, Medicare could potentially implode in on itself. Now, I hope I'm wrong about that. I'm not saying that I know any information that anybody else doesn't, but it's just something that we have to take into consideration. Medicare spending was 15% of the total federal spending limit in 2018. It's projected to rise to 18% by 2029. Um, the combined cost of the programs is projected to be 8.7% of the gross domestic product in 2020. By 2035, it's going to jump to over 11%. According to usdebtclock.org, the national debt is $25 trillion. Medicare Medicaid equals up to about $1.2 trillion of that, about 5%. The debt held by the public projected um, is to rise to $31.4 trillion by the end of 2030. Percentage-wise, it's the highest of debt that we've had since World War II. So, just some numbers to kind of throw at you. Now, I, you know, one thing I wanted to kind of preface my comments by saying is my dad has been in the Medicare business forever, right? I mean, anybody that follows me knows this. I kind of came into the business working with my dad. My dad taught me so much early on, and he kind of introduced me to the industry. Um, I had a great teacher early on in my dad. And essentially, one thing that he always told me that's always stuck in my craw a little bit is they've always found a way to fund Medicare, they pull funding from this, pull funding from that. They've always found a way to make it work, but they have never been in as much debt as they are now in the Medicare in the Medicare um, place, in the Medicare space. And so, in my opinion, I think there's kind of two different ways it can go. The argument is they find a way to repair it, correct it, whatever the case might be, um, and we're able to kind of move forward with it as they expand Medicare. The second argument is it just ends up being too much of a commitment for the government to make and they don't take they don't let new people get onto Medicare they'd make some kind of dramatic change um, we've had more and more whispers of Medicare for all and socialized medicine and everything like that coming into the equation which in my opinion is just crazy and I don't think it could ever happen because I mean we have trouble paying for our system now this would 100x those debt requirements but whatever the case might be there is more and more um, cause to pause in the terms of Medicare. Now, the reason I'm telling you guys this is because, in my opinion, I think one thing we can say for certain is I think Medicare will be around at least for the next 10 to 15 years. I don't, I can't see anything happening to it before that period. I'm looking at this, and I think about this every single day almost. And it could be that I'm just delusional, and they're going to find a way to fix it, and I'm worrying about nothing. But I think about this each and every day due to the fact that I'm thinking to myself, what would happen to me and my family if Medicare just decided to go poof tomorrow? For some reason, worst case scenario, say it implodes on, in on itself, where would I be in a position for me and my family? We have money in the bank, sure. We have investments, stocks, we could li liquefy, things we could sell. Um, I could transition into selling another type of insurance, but it'd be like starting over again. In my personal opinion, you guys, I think now is the prime time opportunity to make the most of your Medicare business. I personally believe that if you're one of those people that is waiting, you know, waiting for the opportune moment, waiting for till tomorrow, wait it off, put it off, put it off, put it off, put it off. And I've been one of these people. I've been someone that's done that before on and off in my career. We're all human, right? But I personally believe that this is an opportunity that you could seize. Imagine what you could build in the next decade. If my concerns are correct, we could run into some issues 10 years out, 15 years out, maybe even 20 years out, maybe even longer. Maybe it never happens. Maybe they find a way to correct these problems that we've addressed and we've brought forward. But 
Imagine what kind of wealth and generational wealth that you could build by helping a lot of people and building a very, very large, respectable business in the next 10 years. People often overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in a decade. So I would encourage you that if you're one of those people that's kind of sitting on your hands, maybe you're working but you're not doing everything that you feel like you could possibly do in your business, maybe you're just waiting for the opportune moment to add a new layer to your business, whatever your case might be, now is the time to take advantage of this incredible market, this incredible opportunity. Because if you take the approach that it might not be here tomorrow and you give everything you have to it today, you're going to be much, much more prepared for a transition if something negative was to happen, worst case scenario. Don't look back on your life and say, I had this incredible opportunity to build this business, but I just dorked around for years at a time or months at a time, or I just did not take it seriously when I had the opportunity to do so. This has been a really big driving force for me. And yeah, it's behind fear. It's behind fear that maybe my business won't be able to run 10 years from now, 15 years from now. I'm hoping I'm wrong. There's a lot of strong arguments to say that I probably am wrong. But no matter what you do, no matter what happens, if you take the approach that this opportunity might not be here tomorrow, no matter what happens, whether Medicare goes away or whether Medicare stays, you're going to be in a great situation because you took action. You had sense of urgency now. If Medicare goes away, worst case, the, the worst case scenario, um, you're, you're prepared. You have money in the bank you're going to be taken care of. Maybe some of you could even retire. If Medicare doesn't go away, you're still in the business. And you built a huge business on the back of just being prepared for the worst case scenario. There's no way you lose by taking advantage of this opportunity now. And I hope you guys do it. Anyway, guys, um, do you think I'm right about this? Do you think I'm totally off? Do you think I'm an idiot? Um, let me know in the comment section. I want to see everything you have to say. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like on it. Subscribe for future six-figure Medicare agent content. And let's not waste our opportunities. Have a great day.